What are you looking at, butthead? Bring to see. Hi. Welcome to the Movie Script Channel. I am your host, Charlie. Today, for the second time on YouTube, I'm going to be discussing The Last Starfighter. So let me explain. I actually did a live watch and review of The Last Starfighter, and I had the movie in a smaller screen. I had a watermark on it, and I was talking throughout the whole movie, and yet I still got a copyright for it. And so I decided I can't do that anymore because it's such a waste of time, but also it makes me so angry at YouTube because they are just the worst. And let me just say something, because I'm going to be realistic. My relationship and probably many other content creators relationship with YouTube is kind of like the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard relationship. They're both toxic to each other. Me especially, like I think YouTube is a scum sucking company. They are greedy. They are a monopoly and I believe they should be broken up. But at the same time, I'm on their platform and I'm using them. We're kind of abusing each other. Here's the thing. Obviously, YouTube has the upper hand. They're the ones that make the money. They put the ads on your videos. Even though you won't make any money on those ads, they'll still put the ads on your videos. You know why? Because it's their ballpark. It's their field. So they can do what they want. There's a little bit of a mutual benefit here because they need us just as much as we need them, which is getting me to my next point. I highly encourage anybody who watches my videos, who watches my live streams to use an ad blocker. Please use an ad blocker. Now, I'm not going to speak for other content creators, although personally I use an ad blocker because ads are fucking annoying. I honestly don't know how you can just sit there and watch the same ads over and over again. It's just, it makes me sick to my stomach. I use Brave Browser. Now, I'm not even sponsored by Brave Browser, but I have it on my phone and I use it for two reasons. Number one, it blocks all the ads on YouTube. And number two, I can turn off my phone screen and still listen to everything. So if you support a content creator and you wanna watch their ads to support them, go for it. But for me personally, I encourage you to use an ad blocker. I encourage it because I don't want YouTube to make any money off of their ads. I don't care that I lose money. I just don't want them to make money. With that being said, let's go over The Last Starfighter. So I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly because I've watched this movie yesterday on YouTube and then they took my video down. Basically, in a nutshell, this story is about a teenage boy, 17, 18 years old. His name is Alex. He basically has finished high school. He lives in what I assume is the nicest trailer park in all of the United States. Like everybody's friendly. It's pretty cleaned up. Like, I mean, it's poor because it's a trailer park, but it genuinely is a nice little community. Anyway, so Alex is kind of like the handyman around there. He helps everybody out, but he's looking to get out of this trailer park. He's just dying to get out of there. Now, one of the other things that he loves is an arcade game called Starfighter. He's like really, really good at it. One of the things I like about this movie is that uh, right off the bat, it's a nostalgia movie. Like for me as a kid, I remember seeing this and watching Alex play the arcade game. And look, there's going to be spoilers ahead. But basically what happens is that this arcade game is actually a recruitment tool to be an actual starfighter. So what happens is, is that Alex gets the high score and then he's contacted by the creator of the arcade machine. He tells him like, hey, all of this stuff is real and I need you to come to this planet so that you can become a starfighter and defend us against the evil galactic Zerg, I think it is. I want to say Zer or Zerg. I'll tell you on screen which one it really is. So one of the things I like about this film is that Alex helps around the house. He's dying to get out. He's looking to get Get this loan, I guess, so that he can go to a better college outside of the city. But unfortunately, he gets like bad news. So you can see that he's a young man trying to get out of this trailer park. But at the same time, he's a good guy. So, you know, all these people around ask for his help and he's happy to oblige. Like in this one scene right here, he's about to go to the lake with these guys. And of course, one of the neighbors, their antenna is not working. And so he just volunteers to go help and he gives up his time and decides to help out. Now, I gotta admit, how long does it take to fix an antenna? But I'm assuming that he just does other stuff around
around the area. He just continues to help. That's his good nature. Now, what happens is this guy, Centauri, he ends up coming down to Earth and he recruits Alex. He does a couple of things. First of all, he makes a doppelganger called the Beta of Alex, and it's a robot of Alex. There's some really hilarious scenes, not just between Beta and Alex's real life girlfriend, but between Beta and Alex's little brother, who has quite the collection of Playboy, like, I am very proud of this young boy. Anyway, so Alex gets thrust into this war and he's about to become a starfighter, but he doesn't want to, even though this is considered an honor. You know, Centauri drags him over there. He doesn't tell him that it's for a war. He, he just throws him right in. Alex refuses and he says he wants to be taken home. Centauri ends up taking him home and then he gives him a little device and he's like, look, if you change your mind, he's like, call me on this device. Alex goes home and he ends up meeting the baby. I guess Centauri completely forgot that he left the beta there. So the beta is explaining. He's like, well, yeah, I'm a beta. He's like, I've just been taking care of things while you were here, except I kind of screwed things up with your girlfriend and uh, she kind of hates you right now. And so Alex is annoyed. He ends up hitting the buttons, trying to call Centauri back. And that's when they see an alien assassin. Apparently these alien assassins, they're like these smelly aliens. So you can smell them from far away. Although they can shapeshift into anyone that they come in contact what if on earth so that's a pretty cool little feature but so can a beta although the beta specifically says that they can't go to war i guess they can't kill people so there's that so the assassin tries to take out alex he ends up shooting centauri but centauri ends up taking out the assassin alex ends up taking centauri back to the alien planet. I forgot the name of it already. Anyway, so Alex takes them back. The base is completely destroyed. So here's some things that really are kind of stupid about the movie. Number one, in space, they have like a space wall and that's preventing the bad guys from entering into the frontier, as they call it, to invade the uh, planets. Another thing that I noticed is that there's only like one armada, like there's one ship and a couple of fighters and then that's it. So I don't understand how one ship is going to take over an entire colony of planets. But, you know, you got to suspend disbelief for a lot of this movie. It was made in the 80s. There's not a lot to it. The CGI and the special effects are especially bad, specifically like any of the space battles. I mean, none of this is good. But again, this is like a member berries movie. It's nostalgia. And I genuinely still enjoyed this movie. So uh, they explain this the situation they got attacked because what happened was the bad guys opened the hole in the space border wall which oh my god cringe anyway they launched some missiles and they destroyed the only fighter base with the only group of starfighters so there's no starfighters left except for alex and his co-pilot which looks like a giant dookie he looks like a human version of hanky the christmas poo what happens is he says that everybody died and it's up to just them and one starship to destroy this gigantic starship and a bunch of fighters. Of course, they end up succeeding because Alex is awesome at the video game and that translates him to being awesome in the ship. Like I said, the space battles themselves are very dated. Think about Lawnmower Man. Remember the CGI and the special effects in Lawnmower Man? Same thing, except probably slightly lower quality. But I still enjoyed this movie. So Alex saves the day. He touches down with his spaceship in the trailer park. Everybody's kind of like in disbelief, but at the same time, they're pretty accepting of it. They're like, oh, we're so proud of you. And so he comes down there and he's like, look, he's like, I'm here to get pick up my girlfriend because the alien women in this world that he goes to are like buttheads. They all have these bald heads with white hair around. I don't blame Alex for going back for his girlfriend anyway so he goes back for his girlfriend and he's like hey come with me he's like i'm a hero on this on this other planet and to these other worlds she's a bit hesitant because she's taking care of her grandmother but then eventually the grandmother's like go oh, you're about to go on a spaceship and see other worlds i'm not gonna keep you in this trailer park so she ends up going with alex happy ending now the final scene shows alex's little brother stepping up to the video game and becoming the next starfighter that's a happy little ending now, I was thinking to myself, I was saying, what other movie is like this? Because I can't think of any other movie where someone plays a video game and then people from like 
different planets or from somewhere else, contact them and say like, hey, the video game was a test and we need your help for so-and-so war or for so-and-so battle. There is only one show that I can think of that mimics this, and that is Future Man. I'm gonna have to go over it in another video because the show is ridiculous. It's uh, with Josh Hutcherson, and he basically like does the same thing. He plays this video game, he gets to this level that nobody else has gotten to, and then people from the future show up at his house and they say that he's the next true warrior, but it is nothing like this movie. It is vulgar, it is raunchy, it is hilarious. When the people from the future come upon Joss Hutcherson, he's actually masturbating to one of the lead characters. But when they show up in front of him, he's already in the process of blowing his load and he blows his load all over them and it is hilarious. But that's another show for another day. Let's go back to The Last Starfighter. I wanna say that I give this movie a seven out of 10. The acting is nothing special. The special effects is god awful, but there's something that I enjoy about this movie. I'm going to have to chalk it up to a little bit of member berries because I saw this movie as a kid. Imagine, you know, you're a kid, you love video games, and then you watch a movie where a teenager plays a video game, is good at it, and then goes off into a real life spaceship to save the world. Like, that's every young kid's dream back in the day. I have to admit there's a lot of nostalgia there's a lot of member berries but i still watched this movie from beginning to end and i enjoyed it like i said special effects awful but for the most part the lead character is very enjoyable i like some of the aliens i like his co-pilot he's a good guy he wants to get out of this uh trailer park and then he has a chance he chickens out at first although to be fair they thrust him into a war. Yeah, he wants to go and get out of this trailer park and he wants to go see the world, but shit. He doesn't want to just be thrown into a middle of the war that can kill him. I kind of sympathize with him in that regard, but eventually, of course, he does the right thing and he fights for them and he saves multiple worlds, although it's so stupid, like one ship, saves multiple worlds. Do none of these worlds have defenses of their own? Like, I just, I don't understand. Also, where the Starfighter Command is located is the stupidest place ever. It's like right on the side of a mountain, clearly visible. Their defenses are these laser guns that shoot everywhere. They're just, they're manned by a single person and, and he must have glaucoma because like he's shooting everywhere. But at the same time, this movie gives me the warm and fuzzies. Like I said, it's it's one of those movies where you picture yourself in the protagonist role, where you get a chance to save the world and pilot a starfighter ship. So yeah, it was fun in that regard. I will say that even though the special effects for the space battles are awful, I did like a lot of the alien special effects. Now, they were being a bit lazy with the main alien race, the buttheads, but at the same time, I'm sure it probably took a little bit of makeup to do those buttheads. I just think they look stupid. They look really silly. Centauri himself is an alien, and uh, again, I would have liked to see him more in alien form, but this movie only had a budget of like $15 million, so you gotta do what you gotta do. And I'm sure a lot of that was spent on the uh, special effects, which back in the day, CGI like that probably cost a pretty penny. You gotta give them a, a little bit of credit. I especially like as a practical effect when the beta robot removes his head and he puts it on the table. It's a simple practical effect, but there's something so adorable about it that I just, I love seeing effects like that. There's just something about it that I truly enjoy. Last Starfighter, I give it a seven, but again, very memorable, very fun, a cute, adorable movie. I enjoyed it. There was a lot of movies that I watched in the 80s and especially the 90s that had major flaws, but they were memorable movies. And that's what this movie is to me. That's what movies like Monster Squad is to me. It's it's a memorable movie. And yes, it may be member berries. It may be nostalgia that's affecting my decision of saying that they're memorable movies. But that's the way I feel. I don't want to review movies that are awful because I don't want to waste my fucking time on movies that are awful. I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about culture war. Fuck all that bullshit. I want to talk about 
good, fun movies. Movies like The Last Starfighter. So thanks again for watching. I hope to have more videos for you soon because can't do the live stuff since YouTube sucks balls. They suck hairy, sweaty, disgusting, smells like vinegar and vitamins, balls. Put them right in YouTube's mouth. Make sure that you guys use an ad blocker on all my videos and I will talk to you on the next one. Take care. What, are you gonna cry now? Come on, cry, baby, cry for me. Come on, cry! <laughs>